Uh, hi, I'm Skinny Cheeks, back with another Elder Scrolls Online guide. This one will be covering the penetration and armor systems. There really isn't much information to go off of within the game to understand how these two work, so hopefully this video will be a good resource that you can refer to, whether you are a veteran player that just needs to brush up on the mechanics, or maybe it's your first time learning about these systems. So the reason I've included penetration and armor together in this video is because they are essentially the inverse of each other. Your armor tells you how much you will resist, and your penetration tells you how much of the enemy's armor that you will ignore. And if you are wondering what armor is, it is both physical and spell resistance. Resistance. So anytime you see that term armor, such as the 1487 armor bonus lines here on this set, that's just referring to an equal amount of both of those. So the higher the armor that the enemy has, the more damage of yours will be mitigated. And then the higher the penetration that you have, the more you deduct from those resistances to cut through and ignore that armor for whatever amount of penetration that you have. So in this example, if a target has 18,200 armor and we have 6,000 penetration, they would effectively have 12,200 armor against us to resist our attacks. So what do these numbers even mean? Let's take a step back and I'll cover some of the history and basics of these systems so that you are all caught up and can better understand how this works. NPCs in ESO would theoretically resist 100% of the damage against them if they had 50,000 armor. This 50k number comes from them being treated as level 50 characters. This means for every 500 armor that the NPC has, they have 1% resistance to your attacks. Players are calculated a little bit differently. Once upon a time, after you hit level 50, there was a veteran rank system that allowed you to level up an additional 16 levels. This system was removed, and now the milestone of 160 champion points remains in its place but under the hood, players are still treated as level 66 characters instead of level 50 characters. It's kind of weird, but yeah, that's how it is. So theoretically, at 66,000 armor, players would be able to resist 100% of the damage done against them. So for every 660 armor that you add, you resist 1% more incoming damage. So your typical armor bonus on a piece of gear will add about 2.25% resistance. So just remember, 50k armor for NPCs and 66k armor for players to reach that theoretical 100% and then you can usually calculate from there. Now I do say theoretical because there are caps on these numbers so that 100% resistance is never actually seen from stacking armor. For NPCs in Dungeons and Trials, the armor levels are set by the developers at 18,200. And for Overland content, this includes Delves, Public Dungeons, and World Bosses. This is only half of that at 9,100. I'm not really sure why they chose those numbers specifically, but knowing that 50k would be 100% resistance, you can easily calculate that 18,200 armor is 36.4% resistance, and 9,100 armor is 18.2% resistance. Meaning that if you have zero penetration or armor debuffs against your enemies, this is the amount of your damage that that enemy will resist from you. For players, the devs have chosen a hard cap of 50% resistance that can come from our armor. So going back to that 66k armor being 100% in theory, cut that in half, and we need to build up to 33k armor in order to reach that 50% resistance cap. Anything above that 33k will not add any extra resistances against our damage taken from NPCs and is essentially just a wasted stat at that point. And this is because NPCs do not have any penetration. For PvP, however, there is a bit more to consider, since armor buffs and penetration are subtracted from the total armor amount, and the enemies you face in PvP will likely have this, you can build past that 33k armor and still benefit from it. So let's say we had 43k armor and faced an enemy with 10k penetration. Their attacks would treat us as having 33k armor instead, and that would still keep us at that cap of 50% resistance. So the starting number for your armor with regard to the cap is really only relevant for PvE content, and in PvP, it really matters where you end up after penetration and debuffs. So let's focus in on the penetration and debuffs for a moment. Back to the dungeon and trial enemies with 18,200 armor, which as we discussed is 36.4% resistance. Essentially, if I went into a dungeon or a trial and I had zero penetration or debuffs and dealt an attack that should hit for 10k damage, it would only hit for 6360 due to that resistance. Now this is quite a bit lower, and since it is percent based, especially so when we start looking at higher numbers, let's say we're capable of dealing 100k DPS, well that would be knocked all the way down to 60 
63.6 K DPS, significantly lower. So essentially in getting past the enemy's armor in a dungeon or trial, you're looking at a 57% damage increase in this scenario, going up from 63.6 K to 100 K, but that percent will remain the same regardless. So when you're viewing it that way, you can see how important it is and just how much of a difference can be made by making an effort to penetrate through the enemy's armor. And that's just one stat of so many different ways to increase our damage, but it is one of, if not the most important one. Now there are a few debuffs commonly provided by the tank that take care of a nice chunk of this armor. Major and Minor Breach are both on the Sword and Shield Taunt ability, Pierce Armor, as well as a few other skills that can provide these. And these reduce the armor by 5948 and 2974 respectively. And then the Infused Crusher enchantment will take care of another 2108 of that armor. The great thing about debuffs versus penetration is that the debuffs work for anyone that is attacking that target as it actually lowers their armor value. Value, whereas penetration is a personal buff based on the attacker. So with just these three common debuffs active, the enemy goes from having 18,200 armor down to only 7170 armor remaining. This means instead of resisting 36.4% of your damage, they're only resisting 14.3% of it. So back to that 100k DPS example, instead of being dropped all the way down to around 64k, you'd only be dropped to around 86k DPS, meaning that just having the tank provide these three common buffs, your DPS is increasing by almost 35%. Such a massive increase for something that's super easy to take care of. So that just goes to show how important these debuffs are. But we don't want to stop there. Ideally, we'll take care of the rest of that armor as well, either through penetration or more debuffs. The most common form of penetration that everyone can grab is the piercing champion point passive node, which gives us another 700, which you can get pretty early on in the leveling once you are at champion level. And then to take care of the rest of it, there are a ton of different routes you can go, but for organized group play, the most common options will be to either run additional debuff sets. So maybe Roar of Alkosh, which reduces armor by 6,000. This would take care of most of the rest of it. We also have Crimson Oath and Trimmer Scale, or a combo of these two together, which would knock out most of that as well. Or you could also have your DPS run enough light armor pieces to make up that difference, since light armor gets 939 penetration per piece worn. Or you could even do a combo such as Crimson Oath plus a few light armor pieces. Like I said, there are many ways to get there at that point. So that will be up to your group and there are many other penetration sources in the game as well. So hopefully this chart helps you decide which route you want to take to get up to that 18,200. I also have this up on my website at skinnycheeks.gg under the helpful resources tab if you want to go back and reference it. But however you go about it, knocking off that remaining 7170 armor is super important as it will be close to another 17% DPS increase. And then finally for setting up for the trial dummy, it's pretty similar to what we just discussed. Zoss chose to go with Alkosh as the debuff set present here, leaving us with only 1170 armor remaining to hit the cap. And so after our piercing champion point node, that's only 470 remaining. So with just one light piece of armor equipped, we're already capped out on penetration for testing on the trial dummy. So to recap everything, NPCs have 1% resistance for every 500 armor, whereas players get 1% resistance for every 660 armor. The caps for NPCs are 18,200 for Dungeons and Trials and 9,100 for Overland, Delves, Public Dungeons, and World Bosses. For solo arenas, you can check out the articles on ESOU if you're interested in the different resistances for the different encounters in there. They are the only pieces of content in the game where the amounts will vary. I'll link those in the description below. And then the cap for players is 30 3k to get to 50% resistance. For PvP, however, this can be built up higher to account for other players' penetration if you want to go that route. Going from no penetration to full penetration on a dungeon or trial enemy is about a 57% DPS increase. Needless to say, it is extremely important to take care of. And again, the charts for the specific ways you can handle that will be on my site for reference at skinnycheeks.gg. I hope this guide was helpful to you to better understand how the penetration and armor systems work in the Elder Scrolls Online. Feel free to ask questions in the comments if you have them, or you can also join my Discord, which I'll have linked in the description below. Big thanks to my Patreon supporters and YouTube members. The monthly contributions help out a ton to keep the website and YouTube channel going. And a special thanks to Nicholas, Simon, Cougar is Bay, and the Cougar City Guild. The Order of War Guild, Ify, Cantankerous Cat, Shady, Blake1816, Mordecai 1212, Santanico, Nalandia, Florian, Vedridi, Cha Cha, Unemployed, and Chriseliana. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one. Uh, bye.